I'm a curriculum developer with Code HS. And since uh, we've got some East Coasters, I am from New Jersey right now. The webinar is supported by MR, Lisa, Portia, and Athena. And they are also, um, they're curriculum developers, PD specialists, and marketing specialists. So they will be monitoring the chat, answering any questions that you might have. Okay, let's get started. So as we go through today, there are two guides here in the bottom left-hand corner for you teachers. There's a teacher's quick reference and a slide reference. We will be sharing the slides out in the chat with you in a few minutes. And the slide reference is simply if you want to know where we are in the presentation. So we'll be starting with a brief overview. We'll talk about what is coding, what is code, and how is it used in the real world. Then we'll create the drawing app. Your students will have plenty of time to draw with their app, customize it, and we'll show them how to share it so that someone else can use their app to make awesome art. And then we'll wrap up, answer any questions you have, and we do have um, a survey. Before we get started, I know that there are different students who have different levels of experience with Scratch. If you have students in your class who are early finishers, who may have been using Scratch for many years or have really taken a deep dive into it, slide 54 has an activity that is designed for early finishers. And that'll be a little challenge activity for any of your students who finish early. I think everyone else will sort of be right along the same speed with us. The last thing before we get started is we would love to see the art that your students create and how they customize the app. So teachers, if you'd like, please start a doc in your, you know, on your device and you can save your students' links to the device. And that way you can share those out later when we're sharing our projects and we can have a look at them and share them amongst ourselves. Okay. If you have any questions, there are two ways to ask questions. Drop them into the chat is the easiest way for your students. Um, they can certainly ask the teacher. So if you're a student, feel free to ask your teacher and they can put your question in the app. One of us will get back to you or put it in the chat. So what is code and how is it used? So coding, sometimes called programming, it gives commands to a computer and it tells the computers what to do. So if you're watching a video on YouTube, there's a lot of code and, and programming that goes behind that to make YouTube work. And it is in almost everything nowadays. I mean, there's giant programs like the Artemis rocket that NASA just sent off to space. There, if you're checking out at the grocery store, there are snippets of code all through cars now, and even um, in your pets. So if you have a cat or a dog and they have a microchip in case they get lost, um, that's programming. And so we have a little cat, you know, sitting on a robot vacuum. It is everywhere. And we're going to use certain types of coding blocks today. We're going to use an event, an event and programming is just something that causes or triggers the program to start. So if you're playing a game and you like you press a button on the controller and your character jumps, that's an event. You pressed a button. And the sequence are the exact order of the commands. And this to me is a little bit like sports or dance in that, you know, when you're playing sports, you're doing a particular set of actions. In the case of basketball, when he pushes down on that basketball, that's the event that triggers the ball to go down, it comes back up, and that process repeats. We call that a loop. The dancer is also looping one of these sequences, one of these instructions. She goes up on her toe, she uses her arms to spin, and then she comes back down. So sequences, loops, and events are what we're gonna use today to make our app. This is what a sequence can look like in Scratch. So let's get started. As
as I go through today, I'm going to demo and demonstrate the steps first. So when you see this little teacher with the speech bubble, um, have your students look up at the screen. I'll be showing them the steps. And then when you see the puppy Carol, your students will be programming and that's when they will be working. And it'll be a back and forth. I'll show, they'll do, and then they'll customize. So think about a time that you've created drawings. How did you do it? How did you hold your pen? How did you make paths on your line, you know, on your paper? Did you use different line widths, different colors? So today, instead of using our hand to create a drawing, we're going to create, we're going to use your mouse and your keyboard to make the drawing. And your mouse and keyboard will control this little cat that we call Scratch. Before we can do anything, we need to open Scratch. So the easiest way, if you look at this green rectangle, is to type Scratch into your search bar. Or you can type the whole name S-C-A-T-R-A-T-C-H dot M-I-T dot E-D-U. And after you type that, you're gonna see this screen. For today's project, you do not need a Scratch account. So teachers that are here, um, if you could let us know, let us know if your students have Scratch accounts, but it is not necessary. All right, students, it is your turn. Go ahead, make sure that you are at the Scratch screen. And we are ready to open the app. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna click the word create. And when you do, you'll see this screen. You're gonna click this X to close those boxes. And now we're ready. If you are signed in, it's fine. Your app will save automatically. If you're not signed in, that's okay. You'll just follow along the way I am. All right, I wanna give you a few minutes, teachers. I wanna make sure that everybody has Scratch opened up. Awesome, yes, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Monahan. So when we draw, we need a pen or a pencil. So now we're gonna add the code for a pen. And we're gonna start over here in Scratch. These colored circles on the far left-hand side of your screen, you'll see blue, motion, purple, looks, yellow, events. This is called the coding library. This large white rectangle in the middle is where we will be dragging our blocks to build our program. And the cat, this is Scratch the Cat. <clears throat> and the cat will serve as our pen. So the cat will be drawing our lines. First thing we have to do, we have to get the pen. We're gonna come down here to this blue square in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. When you click that, you'll see the big green square with pen. And then you'll click that. Now we have the pen at the very bottom of our colored circles, and we have our green pen blocks. So go ahead, add your pen extension now. And when the extension is installed, this is a close up of your blocks. And you'll notice each green block has a little picture of a pen and all the words are related to pens and drawing, erase, put your pen down, choose some colors, choose the pen size. 
So we're going to be using these to customize our app today. So let's get coding. All right. First thing we want to do is we want to set what's called initial conditions. Go back to our sports analogy. This is like putting on your shoes. I'm going to go play basketball, put on basketball shoes, get your ball, go to the court. Going dancing, put on your ballet slippers, go to the dance studio, maybe stretch. And you do those actions every time you play, you know, you do your activity. Well, our pen is going to do the same actions each time we start our program. We're going to lift the pen up so there's no lines, erase any lines that are on the paper, and we're going to set a pen size. And I'll show you how to do that. Just like when you're starting sports, your event triggers the action or causes the action. So in Scratch. So we get our yellow circle event. And then the very first event block is this green flag clicked event. Looks a little bit like a baseball cap. You cannot put any blocks on top of it. So when the green flag is clicked, we want the pen to do some things. So we come down to our pen block. Remember, we want to erase all of our lines. We want to lift our pen up. And we want to set our pen size. And that one is all the way at the bottom. It's good to pay attention. One of the, one of the gotchas that can happen in this program is if you choose change pen size by accident, instead of set pen size, your pen will change size each time that you draw. Notice my blocks are in a slightly different order than they were in the slide. That's okay. That's fine for these initial conditions. We're gonna set our pen size to five, kind of a nice average size line. You ready? All right, you do. So go ahead. Get your yellow green event flag and your green pen blocks. Awesome. And I don't want to rush. Um, if students have questions or if you want a little bit more time, I know sometimes there are some classes that are really big and it helps to have a few extra minutes, just let us know. Awesome. So now we have set our initial conditions. Now we want to program how we're going to be moving the line. How are we going to actually draw the line? And to do that, we're going to use our mouse pointer. Once we program, you will not have to click your mouse, which is kind of awesome. Your hand controls the, you know, pencil or the crayon. We want to control with our mouse pointer. So we're going to go into these blocks, these orange blocks, that are called the control blocks because we want to control something. And it's down here, right underneath the yellow event. So we click the orange circle for the control and we want this action to happen forever. This is our loop. This is like, you wanna dribble that basketball until you get to the net or you know, until you get to the basket. Well, we want to have our mouse pointer, you know, have the line follow our mouse pointer until we're, we're done. So we're gonna use that forever loop. So go ahead and get your forever loop now. Awesome. And the motion we said is to follow the mouse pointer. So again, it's very intuitive. We know we wanna move. We're gonna use the blue motion blocks and we want our line to go to or to follow 
So we take this, it's the go-to random position block. It is the fourth blue block down. It's a funny thing to say quickly. All right, go to, but we don't want random. We click the white triangle and then we click mouse pointer. So now we will go to the mouse pointer anytime the green flag is clicked. Go ahead and add your block now. And teachers, it is fairly common for one or two students to leave the go-to block on random. So if you do find that a student has their mouse, you know, their scratch cat is going to be going everywhere on the screen, the place that they should check will be the go-to and they just make sure that that's labeled as mouse pointer. Awesome, okay. And here's just a quick animation to make sure that yours looks like ours. Now we get to try it out in our program. So we come back over here, this green flag up here, that's gonna start your program. So you click that and you move your mouse. You don't have to click. Your cat should follow your mouse pointer. When you're ready to stop, you click the stop sign. So go ahead, test your program. Make sure that your cat follows your mouse pointer. Hopefully you are getting some some squeals, because usually that's pretty exciting for the kids to get started. And don't forget that stop sign is your friend. It just stops the program and then you can use your mouse. Any questions, teachers? Have your students been able to code all of their initial conditions? And let us know. Let us know if there are any questions or comments yet. All right, now we're gonna add our line so we can start drawing. So this will be equivalent to putting the pen down on paper. This program is all about patterns and coding is all about patterns. Oftentimes you can reuse code. So what we're gonna be using are the keyboard arrows. We're gonna use the down keyboard arrow to put the pen down on the paper and the up arrow to lift the pen up and move to a new location. We'll use other parts of the keyboard for color. The pattern that we'll be following today is going to be first a yellow event block, then a green pen block. And we will have parallel sequences. We're going to have these sequences that can happen at the same time. So when the down arrow key is pressed, we wanna put our pen down and start drawing. So let me go over to Scratch. This is a new event. So I come back to my yellow circle. Right underneath the green flag, you will see this when space key pressed event. We're gonna change space to down arrow. And then I come to my pen and I get my pen down. All right, go ahead and code to put your pen down. Now you get to draw. So don't forget the stop sign will stop your program. 
But now you come press your green flag, bring your cat out, put your down arrow, press your down arrow on your keyboard, and you can start drawing. Notice we can't pick the line up yet. We have not added that piece of code yet. If you want to erase at this point, you just click the green flag again and down arrow and you can draw again. So go ahead. I wanna give the kids a few minutes. I wanna give the students a few minutes to draw because they've done the basic app and it's often very exciting. Um, in the classroom when that happens. So let's give you a minute to draw and then we'll continue customizing. Okay, congratulations. We are going to take the next step and we're gonna add color because color is great. So again, we're remembering the pattern, yellow vent block, green pen block. We will use the space key pressed. This time we're actually gonna use a space bar so we don't have to change this from space to arrow. We're going to use the space bar. So when you're drawing, anytime you press the space bar key, you're going to change your color by a certain amount. We're not gonna choose a color right now. You can, you're gonna have a chance to do that later. What we're gonna do is simply make a rainbow effect. So you're gonna change by a certain amount each time you press the space bar. Again, we start with our event block. And that is the second from the top. We come down to our pen. Now this, again, where you want the change pen color by block, it is fourth from the bottom. We do not want set pen color. <laughs> That'll give you one color and that's awesome. And you're gonna have a chance to do that. But for right now, we wanna change the pen color. All right, go ahead. It is your turn. Add your blocks. You'll need your event and then you'll need your change pen color block. And as soon as you are done, you get to test it and see what kinds of colorful pictures you can start to make. You press the green flag. Don't forget to put your arrow down, start drawing. And then each time you press that space bar key, it changes color. Go ahead. See how many colors you can make. And teachers, as your students are beginning to make art, even if it's as simple as mine is, if you wanna share it in the chat, we would love to have a link um, and we can, we can share that out towards the end. Cause I know the kids always like it when they get a chance to share their art.
So I'm going to try and draw while you're all drawing. And before we go to our next customization, it's getting cold where I live. So I'm going to try and make a snowman. Hmm. I'll give you another minute to draw and then we will move on. Okay, I'm going to click my stop sign and Notice it was hard for me to make my snowman because I couldn't lift my pen up, my cat up. I had to do one continuous line. So the next thing we're going to do is lift our pen up and we're going to use the same pattern. So if we used when down arrow key press to put the pen down, what do you think we're going to use to lift the pen up? Go ahead, you guys can tell your teacher. Right, we're gonna use the up arrow. So when you press the up arrow, we want the pen to move up so that we can make new lines and my snowman can get a little bit better. To do that, we're gonna come into scratch. Again, we start with the events block. That same when space key pressed. Change it to up arrow, come down to our pen and get our pen up. It's the fourth from the top. And notice it's the exact same block we used in our initial conditions. So it's fine to use the same block in many places in your program. Your turn, go ahead and add your blocks to program the pen up. And of course, when you finish programming, you get to try it. You'll press the green flag, press the down arrow, make a line, press the up arrow, and look, I can now go to a new spot. I can continue to change my colors. So all of our sequences are ready. We can change colors and move our lines anytime we want. So now we can draw with more precision. Go ahead, make some pictures. I'm gonna try my snowman and then we're gonna save our app. And I can add lots and lots and lots of different colors, any color I would like.
Hmm. I hope you are all having fun drawing. You'll notice there are still a few things that would make our app better. So let's get ready and look at some other ways to customize our app. And before we do anything else, we are going to save. So teachers, I wanna just make sure that your students have had a chance to add pen up, pen down and change color. And if so, I'd like to show them how to save if they do not have an account. Again, if you have a Scratch account, Scratch will automatically save your work. But if like me today, you do not have an account, up here in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the word file. And so this is a lot like many of the Google um, or Microsoft apps. You'll click file and then save to your computer. This will save locally to your computer. And teachers, it will be a .sb3 account. So you will see on their local device, a .sb3. And that saves everything that we've got recorded and created up to this point. We'll have to save again later in order to save our future work. So go ahead, have your students save now. They're gonna click file and then save to your computer. All right. Scratch does not give you a chance to name the file as you save. So that's why just look for a .sb3 when you're ready to pull your file up again later. The great thing is you can reuse this and then we'll show you how to do that at the end. So the next part, you're gonna to get to customize more independently. We're back to our pattern. We want to change the width of our line. We want to use the right arrow to make a line wider and the left arrow to make the line thinner. So again, we need a yellow vent block and a green pen block. Let's go have a look. Come up to my yellow events. I get the same space key pressed that we've been using. And I change this to read. I'm gonna start with a left arrow. So the left arrow will make our line thinner. I come down to my pen. At the very bottom, second from the very bottom, it says change pen size by. That's the block that you want. You wanna change that pen size by a minus one or take away some of the width. Go ahead. I would like you to try and do and program both the left arrow key pressed and the right arrow key pressed events. So follow our pattern and add more to your app. Go ahead and do that now. I'm sorry, there is a siren going off near me right now. So I, I hope that's not disturbing you guys.
Fantastic. So on my screen, I have what the finished program so far looks like. So this is your basic app that you're going to get to customize further. If you can, please come to file and save to your computer again. That way you'll have this last bit of code that you just added in case anything happens. Sometimes um, it's easy to lose the work if it's not saved. So go ahead and save your work now. And then draw with your app. You'll press your green flag, down arrow, and then go ahead, start changing colors and changing line widths. So I can make my line much, much, much wider and I can make it much, much, much thinner. And remember your color change still works. So you can change your color while changing the width of your line. So let's see what you guys can create. I'm gonna work on my snowman while you create some drawing on your side. Okay, we would love to see some of what your students are creating. So as your students are creating, feel free to put some of their projects in the chat. I know kids love making a sort of a large rainbow. They often cover the whole screen and that's great. Um, I also know that kids love to make the pen as wide as they can and see how quickly they can fill the screen and that's okay too. So go ahead. As your students are finishing, feel free to share. Mm, I don't know about my snowman. <laughs> I think he's melting.
I'm going to give your classes a few more minutes, maybe two more minutes to continue drawing. And then I will share some of the customizations that they can make. After that, your students will have free reign. You know, they can basically explore and scratch and add, change, and customize from here. So teachers, are any of your students, um, or is everyone able to make the app? Is anyone's mouse pointer going to random or are any of their lines um, staying wide or staying small? As if so, we can certainly debug that with you. Just let us know. Okay, so what I'd like to do is take a break from drawing just for a minute or two, just to show you some of the other things that you can do in Scratch to help customize um, your app and also ways and places that you might want to create drawings. So we'll give you a second, eyes up here, and We'll talk about why apps are fun. Apps are fun because you get to make them how you want them. So I'm going to show you some ways to add to your program. One of the ways that you can add is you may want to set a particular color. So if I want to draw, say, a heart, the iPads, when they are using the pen, they are, okay. So those of you who have iPads, the app will work. They need to make smaller lines. It's almost um, on the iPad. It almost comes up like a connect the dot. The way that the iPad works, it tracks the finger from point to point. So I'll show you um, on my screen, rather than a smooth line like this, let me, um, so if you want to have the line go say from where I am now, and curve like this, what your students will do is they'll start here, they'll put their pen down, they'll go a little ways, and then a little bit of a curve. It's almost as though you're there collect, connecting straight lines. So when you're on the iPad, it is a little bit different. So it's not a big fluid movement. It's connecting individual points. Try that and let me know if that solved your problem. Yeah, that's a great question actually. So Your students, by the way, since they have iPads, um, they can email the file, um, say home, or you could put it in their Google Classroom. If you use Google Classroom, they could put the link and then use it on another device um, that has a mouse and a keyboard, which sometimes helps. So 
So I'm going to show you how to set a specific pen color now. If you look over here in your green pen blocks, there is set pen color. And so you would pull that out and decide what event you want to trigger that. So let's say um, yeah, if I want to draw a heart, I want to draw something red. I come up, I can get my space key pressed. And I can change this to be anything. You know, I could have it be R for red. So if I press the R key, I want this to be red. And the way to do that, and your students can do this with any color they would like, you drag all of these three sliders. So since I want red, there's red, I would drag them like this. And so your students can, can play around with that. Now, when I press the R key, I will only draw in red. I won't draw in any other color. I wanna make my line sort of big. And I press my R key and I can draw my, my heart. Valentine's Day will be right around the corner. So that's one thing that you can do. There's also backgrounds in Scratch. And I just wanna show you in case you wanna put your drawing into, into a scene. In the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see this, it almost looks like a landscape or a photograph. Choose a backdrop, click the magnifying glass, and you get to choose from many, many, many different backgrounds in Scratch. Okay, I'm gonna pick a winter scene. And now my heart has a context. My snowman could have been here too. If you have headphones or if it's okay to play a sound in your classroom, you could come to the pink sound blocks and play a little sound when that R key is pressed. And it would only make the sound when that particular key is pressed. You can explore any of these other blocks to add more customization to your app. And that is the end of the instruction time. Students will have plenty of time still to draw and to explore. What I would like is for teachers, um, if you have some artwork to share, please drop it in the chat. We'd love to see it. And we do have a survey. So we'd love to get your feedback on the webinar, ways that we could improve them in the future, what you liked about it. And that would be super helpful to us for the future. Right. So now we get to just keep drawing.
Oh, good. Oh, I am so glad to hear that that fixed it, Miss Monahan. I'm glad. Awesome. So if you have any, like I said, any links, anything that your students would like to share out, we would love to see it. Um, we have really had just a wonderful time. I hope that your students were able to draw and create. Make sure that they're saving each, you know, each time before they log off if they're not logged into Scratch. So thank you very, very, very much. And we have, you know, we'll be here for about 15 more minutes if you want to keep your students on and keep drawing, they certainly can stay on. And if your class is over and you need to log off, that's okay too. Thank you.